Southeast Asians, seen as the weaker type, the Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, thousands more. Of course, there's many others. I just, again, I'm not very experienced and uh, I'm ignorant to other groups who might fall into this category, as well as those who are dangerous or seen as dangerous. Um, and obviously, currently, we have the Middle Eastern Asians as well as African Americans. Right? In the middle, we have that white norm. And with America, we tend to have, kind of have like the, 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 the white norm as that gold standard. Uh, I don't mean as everyone wants to be white, but everyone wants kind of that, that level of privilege, and it's kind of the, if, if you don't fulfill what the white norm is, you don't really feel exactly accepted into American culture. Right? That's just the feeling of it. And what I, know, what, what I want to say now is that like, I think everybody's the same. And not in the sense where we all have the same rights, but um, if we kind of take a look at, like, let's say, a Chinese or an Asian norm, um, those who have been to a Korean restaurant who's not Korean, you guys would probably know you're not going to get service. Right? It was like a known thing. If you go to a Korean restaurant, you got to bring a Korean person because then you'll get the privilege of getting five star service. Right? And that's just kind of when you're in that Asian bubble, you're going to get that Asian treatment and that kind of bubble privilege. Another example is what's called the island norm. Uh, a friend of mine um, who's at the school, we all know that at the library you're not allowed to eat anything, right? I got in trouble for eating like a PB and J sandwich. I got scolded and almost kicked out. Um, I was taking a break outside of the 24 hour, and I see my classmate who's black. She's carrying like not just a cookie or a little snack, but an entire tray of food with like fries and a burger. And she's walking up, strolling in there, ready to go inside. I'm like, wait, you can't do that. You're gonna get in trouble. She's like, no, 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 no. They'll let me. And I stopped, I was like, it's because you're black, isn't it? And she was like, yep. And, and, and I was like, you know, go for it. Like that's power to you. Take advantage. Take advantage of that privilege. I mean, obviously, you know, from what we can kind of tell, we you know, those they don't get that kind of privilege in the United States, right? And they don't have that kind of privilege in Korean um, uh, restaurants. So, I mean, and that's kind of what I mean when I say everybody's the same, is we take advantage of this. And I'm not saying this is okay. I'm just saying that this is just the nature of how people are, right? So, um, obviously, as an Asian American male, it's going to be, this talk is going to be focused around the white norm and being part of America, all right? So another spectrum here is just kind of the, the spectrum of racist and racism. What I believe is that there are again two polar sides. There are people who are bad in the sense where they, whether or not they're educated on the matter or local culture, they have this genuine dislike or hatred for groups of people who are different or whatever, right? And then you have the, those who are good, who again, educated or not, feel like equality is absolutely the way of life, or that's the right thing to do. And then you have people in the middle, Right? And the crappy thing is that the people in the middle are those who really don't have a side. And they don't exactly do anything negative, and they don't exactly do anything positive. And unfortunately, the way, because race is so sensitive, we kind of put those people who don't do anything, and we say, well, if you're not with me, you're against me, and they're seen as bad. And it's, it's unfortunate, because I'm trying to put myself in a situation. Let's say I, I'm going to go to the extreme and I am a rich white male in a rich white community. And my entire life I've been raised in here without any exposure to anybody else, okay? Everyone around me is also exactly the same as me. What is my goal and what is the purpose of me having to learn about other people's cultures? You know, again, it's not okay, because what I believe is that, you know, equality and knowing a multicultural, you know, having that kind of environment is good, but there are places like this that exist, and it's, it's hard to be upset when this person is completely ignorant of exactly other people's values. And in the end, they're gonna live their life and the rest of their, their family's lives in that area. So their thing is, well, what, 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 what benefit does it have for them? For me, I mean, I'm Asian, but I don't know anything about Malaysian jurisdiction, right? And it's kind of, it's, it's, and it's because I, I'm in my own boat. 
And I'll get into more levels. Anyways, moving on uh, to kind of my talk now. I do want to start by saying um, this is a talk about being a my experience as an Asian American male and representing that group. I'm not a female, um, so I can't really speak for them. I can say that I think they had it way worse because not only do they face the stereotypes of being Asian, they also have the stereotypes of being women. And if you guys went to the talk, and I guess again, obviously our school is mostly women, so you guys have an idea of always how that how it is. So again, most of the things that I say is completely based on my male experience, and the Asian women had it worse. So Chinese boy. <laughs> this is in quotes because when I type in Chinese boy cartoon, this is actually what I'm getting. <laughs> It's funny, and it's racist, but it's funny. Okay. So, anyways, where you'll find my kind is uh, in, in the United States. Typically, I'm from California, so there's a little star there. You're going to find us primarily in, in California, Texas, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and uh, places around New York. Obviously, there's going to be others spread around, but in, in America, these are the top four. Okay. And so, my parents, I'm a first generation, meaning my parents are, they weren't born. In, in, in America, they actually wanted to raise them either. They, they, you know, they immigrated, I think, in the 70s or so. So they, they graduated high school and then got pregnant. Well, mom got pregnant. And <laughs> just pretty much just tried to start living that adult grind. And I was, again, I was born here. I, have, I know a little bit of Chinese. I have, I have a decent background, but definitely not strong enough where the communication with my parents is very, very good. And so, again, my parents worked hours, endless hours, so I didn't really grow up with much of an interaction with them. They, they spoiled me endlessly. I got whatever I wanted to say. That's what my sisters didn't say. They're going to watch this, they're going to totally gonna disagree. But, you know, we, we, we were treated well, but we didn't really have that parental guidance. And I'm not mad because they understand that, again, with the communication and the fact that they have to support their family and the lack of their own personal education, you know, it's really difficult to kind of guide us in the right direction that, they, that, is, that society sees fit. And of course, you know, everyone knows about like the standard of, uh, of how Asians are placed uh, within our community. We, you know, A is average. It's expected, right? But if we're told to get A's and our parents don't have a much of an educational background, how can they mentor us into going about getting good grades, right? So <laughs> really the, the motto for us growing up as kids is just do it. And that's really crappy because it leads to so much stress and you're going to see a lot of cheating in Asian communities and it's, and it's this whole, whole thing of just, it's, it's insane because imagine you don't have a swim when I throw you in the water and, and every day I'm going to throw you in the water and if you don't get it, but, you know, if you don't eventually get it, you're disowned or you feel like you're not going to be a part of that community. It's, it's, it's really, really stressful in that sense and that's one of the stresses that we get from within our own, our own sphere. So this is stuff that I grew up on. Again, um, I grew up on TV. I didn't have cables and Nickelodeon Disney I didn't get. But then again, a lot of us didn't really because they felt, you know, Asian and cheap, we don't want to pay for, for cables. <laughs> um, obviously Dragon Ball Pokemon, I guess that's like the good stuff. There is like some endorsement of fighting, but you know, for the most part. Well, it's really kind of not probably good for a seven-year-old to, so, you know, watch things with a lot of inappropriate sexual windows or in your face sexual windows. <laughs> you know, and, and that was that kind of led to a bit of a, a lot of inappropriate jokes. And again, I didn't have that kind of parental, or we don't have to have that kind of parental guidance of saying, you know what, you can't say that. You know, I was a kid in sixth grade, I would be screaming boner whenever someone threw a jump shot. Like, That's not okay. You know, it's, it, it's a lot of, all right, so this is something, this is something obviously is not just exclusive to, to Asian American males, but you know, when growing up, you know, when we start being aware of our surroundings and ourselves, we start having a lot of, you know, these, it's the, it's the point of where we're gaining social skills, you know, common courtesy, stuff like that, and all these things. And again, we don't really have anything but the media and TV and just this little narrow, you know, opening of telling us exactly who we are, right? And so really, our, our confidence kind of just kind of plummets. We don't really, we're really unsure of a lot of things. And so, going back to the bubble um, of, 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 of Chinese American society, it, it's still it's still a patriarchy, like most cultures. It's male dominated. So I, I've, I've, been in, I've had the luxury of been, being able to be part of that. You know, I, I'm, I'm in, in, when I'm in my Chinese bubble as a male, I, I, I am the dominant one. I get, I get the privilege. I am the one who's in charge in that sense. I'm not saying I take advantage of it, but this is the privilege that's, that's been given to me. And you know, obviously, in, in Chinese culture, what does it take to be a man? What does a man mean? 
and that's you know someone who's intelligent, uh, tolerant, patient, uh, you know, with money and family, good face. You know, face is a very very important thing with the Asian community. You know, but again, in our bubble, we, we feel accepted. We feel like we're normal, and that's because you know, in in our bubble, everyone's very similar. We have similar interests, such as culture, right? Again, the big problem is uh, my friends said this to me yesterday. Put up on this. Pretty funny, um, but this is this is true. Right? I mean, I'm I'm kind of living this right now. I'm, I'm trying to be a doctor, <laughs> so like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this pressure to exceed, you know, getting that 4.0, being being successful, you know, and unfortunately, within this bubble, we are all so competitive with one another, and it, it, it's it's really crazy. It's and it's unfortunate because obviously you know, we we're trying to work together, right, to to fight for equality, and yet we have this interpersonal or you know interracial issue, and I'll get more into that. And so now here, let's go into what white society sees us as. And again, this, this photo is pretty, I, I think it's pretty bad, in my opinion. Obviously, it was like in the 70s or 80s. This is from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, it's a white man portraying Asian. And I, I really think that this is the generalization of white America. This encompasses the image of what white America sees as Asians. And obviously, I know that there are tons of people who don't see this way, but really, as a generalization, this is how I feel as I'm you. And Again, the, the American definition of being a man is much like what I listen with the Asians, but another really important thing is that size. Size really matters in America. Bigger trucks, bigger is better. And what is the general definition of Asians? We're smaller. Everywhere, right? <laughs> so here, here's, here, I know he's British, but you know, he, here's, here's a white man. He plays Superman, right? And he is, Superman is what? He is the savior of the world. All right, this is the image of the savior of the world here, and that—that that is what we're up against. <laughs> and so, when we look at, uh, in, in let's let's go back to Korea here, and this is someone who is famous in Korea. Actually, I don't know who this is. He's a famous Korean pop star, and um, he probably is more famous in terms of fan members than Henry Cavill. But this is the, this is what is considered attractive and it in Asian culture. And this isn't, he's not like a, like a, the, the artist formerly known as Prince kind of thing. No, like there's, this is it. Like there's, there's a lot of guys who look like this who are famous. Okay. And again, so with, with, with that side issue, you're also going to see a lot of people. I don't know if, you, if people who've been to Asian communities or just people with Asians around. If you go to the gym, we're probably going to see a bunch of Asian guys just trying to just fight against that. Because we, you know, again, as men, especially born in America, we are. We're also kind of brainwashed by the idea that I need to be large. That, that's what's matter. That's what's important, right? Mike Chang, six pack shortcuts for the YouTube. I'm sure you got a lot of ideas. <laughs> Again, other generalizations: awkward, nerdy, you know, good at math, expect to be smart, um, choppy English, funny accent, kind of thing. Can't see, can't drive, martial arts, and we all look the same, right? Um, I, I think that is one of the biggest things. It is, is the Japanese does not mean Chinese, does not mean Korean. And I'll get a little more into that as we go. But ultimately, really, what, what, what I feel Asian American males are seen as is uninteresting and inferior. And if, again, if you guys went to the talk on Tuesday with female empowerment, that actually, um, actually, before I get to that. So, growing up, we aren't really sure if this is, that, is who we are or if this is who we're told that we are. And that is a really, really confusing thing because. You can imagine our egos are so confused. When we're in our Asian bubble, again, we are that dominant force. We are accepted. And then we take a step out, and we're seen as the complete opposite. It's very, very confusing. And that can kind of account for a lot of the social awkwardness you might see with us. All right, and so what happens is now, a lot of us feel like we're, we have to choose between assimilating into complete white society or <coughs> Just staying in our bubble, right? And I'm sure you guys have seen both realms. If you haven't exposed to the number of Asians, those white guys who joined the white frats, but it's the Asian guys who joined the white frats who completely disown their culture, right? And put down the other Asians who 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 who, who do accept theirs. And it's the other spectrum where there's the Asians who just completely are just in their bubble, 